to work. 
Good morning. How are you today? It's a new day the Lord has added to our lives again. We can rejoice and be glad in this day. Last um, Sunday, we talked about the importance of God's presence based on Joshua 3, chapter 3 and chapter 4. We were saying that God's presence provided direction for the journey. Secondly, it made impossible situations possible. And thirdly, it affirmed God is among His people. Today, we're going to talk about the power of praise. What happens when we praise instead of complain? What happens when we focus on the possibilities and not on the problems? This past three Sundays, we have been talking about God's holy presence in the lives of the Israelites, guiding them in their, in their journey to the promised land under the leadership of Joshua, a disciple of Moses. This study of Joshua chapter 6 today will show us that praise has the power to tear down fortified walls of the enemy of our faith. Joshua verses 1, chapter 6, verse 1 to 2, the story unfolds. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Have you ever thought they were locked down? They also had locked down before, even before us uh, being locked down today. I think there are still places today that are being locked down. Jericho was barred and they were locked down. Verse 2, the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. Joshua had 40,000 fighting men, trained and armed, ready to face a battle, face-to-face -face battle. His two spies did their homework earlier, and so everything was well said, all said. But Jericho was tightly closed. The wide iron gate was shut so securely that no one came out nor came in. The Lord said to Joshua, see, look at the gate, look at Jericho, it's closed, but I have delivered it into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. This king was the person who sent messages to Rahab to bring down the two Israelites in, in, in her inn because they were spying out the land. In order for us to understand a better perspective, we look at the context of the situation. Let's go back a few verses earlier. Joshua 5, chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, and it goes, Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. You know, Joshua was not unaware of this Theophanes. I think he was used to have Theophanes. Theophanes are appearances uh, of people that the Lord, of, 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 of beings that the Lord is sending for them to see. And so he, had, he was not scared and asked this person, are you for us or for our enemies? The man replied, the person replied, neither. But as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? Reading this line of, 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 of statement, I could not help but recall when Paul, Saul before, was chasing the Christians and, pers and, and persecuting them on the road to Damascus. And there was a, a light that came from heaven and the Lord spoke to him. And Paul's response was, Lord, what do you want me to do? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy, and Joshua did so. I was expecting that, you know, uh, he had this sword 
in his hand and he will give it to Joshua and he will say hey here it is Joshua use this like Moses was using the rod when he parted the Red Sea God has done his part already I have delivered past tense Joshua with his fighting men and all the people will have to do their part future However, before things could, could roll, or before things could kick off, Joshua, the top guy, had to do a personal preparation, consecration before the presence of Holy God. Remember earlier, Joshua asked the people to consecrate themselves as they would follow the Ark of the Covenant. This time it's him preparing for a big task he has to face. Taking off sandals because he is standing on holy ground. Remember when God called Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt? Moses was so busy with his flock that the Lord had to catch his attention through a burning bush. Perhaps just like all of us today. We're so busy with what we're doing busy with our business, busy serving the Lord, busy doing the ministry, and, and sometimes forget our relationship with the Lord. I hope not. Moses was so busy, the Lord was catching his attention. The Lord caught him through a burning bush. When he came near, the Lord told him to take off his sandals because the place was holy. God's presence is holy and should be regarded with utmost reverence. Joshua was already assured of victory by no other than the commander of the Lord's army as the Israelites' allies. Now let's see what the Lord's war strategy was in this battle. Verses 3 to 5 of chapter 6 goes, March around the city once with all the armed men do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priest blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up everyone straight in. Very pre precise instructions. Joshua had two challenging choices. One, obey the instructions of the Lord. Two, revise the plan according to his war experience. You know, that's the problem with us who had been old or been long in the ministry or whatever we're doing. We had a long track record of success that we can Sometimes negotiate with God or tell God, you know, this is how we were doing God. How about this? Joshua opted to fully obey his commander in chief, the Lord of hosts. Try to imagine for a while. They were marching without any word around Jericho for six days. And perhaps those people in Jericho who were there were wondering, what's this crazy guys doing? They are military and they are not doing anything. But listen, on the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times. In the same manner, except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Hallelujah. But imagine for a while with me. A wall around 12 feet high, 12 feet high, and 6 feet wide. On top of the wall were Jericho's fighting men, archers, 
gatekeepers, watching the movement of the Israelites and preparing their counterattack. They must have wondered what was going on. Suddenly, when they heard the blast of the trumpet, then the shout of a war cry and praises among the Israelites. Imagine their shock with the wall they were standing on started to collapse and they found themselves helpless on the ground. Barnes in his commentary wrote this quote, Various attempts have been made to explain the fall of Jericho by normal causes, by undermining of the walls, or by an earthquake, or by a sudden assault. But, he said, the narrative of this chapter does not afford the slightest warrant for any such explanations. It cannot be explained scientifically. Simply, it was an act of God. Period. What is the significance of a shout in the context of a war? Bible scholars affirm a shout signals an onset of the attack, a psycho war intended to create panic and confusion to melt the heart of the enemy. If this is true, then wow, they were doing what is right. Now listen to this uh, account. Look at this account in Judges, chapter 7, verse 19 to 20. This is Gideon fighting against this Midianites and um, other forces there that they were facing. Gideon had a lot of soldiers with him as he was preparing for this battle. But the Lord told him, that's too much. Or else these people might think that it's because of their strength. And so, process of elimination, it came down to 300 soldiers. And Gideon divided those three soldiers into three groups. Now listen to verse 19. Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed the guard. They blew the trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. And they shouted, listen to the shout, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Very clear. But with Joshua, it was silent. There was no such thing as this. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. What did he, what did he do? Just shouted, a sword for the Lord. And for Gideon. Here's another scenario in 1 Samuel 4 5. When the ark of the Lord's covenant came into the camp, all Israel raised us a great shout. Listen, that the ground shook. One time we were uh, on the 29th floor of our office and there was a slight earthquake. Scary, scary, 29th floor. And we saw the movement of the building. That was scary. The ground shook when they shouted. What happened on the seventh day when the priest crying, carrying the Ark of the Covenant, blew the trumpet and his right shoulders gave a loud shout? The strong fortified wall came crashing down big time. There is indeed power of praise. Here's another scenario in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. The context of this was that Judah, under the leadership of Jehoshaphat, they were cornered by the powerful nations, the Ammonites, the Moabites, and this from Mount Seir, who were invading Judah. 
and they were cornered inside and they could not do anything anymore because they were scared. Listen to what Joseph had did. He asked the people to worship and praise God. And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. If you would read the story, they were just looking at the dead bodies around and they were taking care of them. There was no shot, arrow shot, only singing praise to the Lord and the Lord was doing it for them. There's a good missionary story that we can probably tell today. Paul and Silas, when they were in Philippi, there was this slave girl that, uh, that would, would predict the future. And we say today, future teller. And so her owner was earning a lot of money because of what she was doing. This lady was following Paul. And it came to a point when Paul was distracted. And so he commanded the spirit to get out. And this girl was set free. And as a result of that, the people got gang up against him because the owner could not earn money anymore. Paul and Silas were put in jail. Verse 25 of chapter 16 of Acts. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Hymns here. I'd like to highlight hymns here because I grew up with hymns. Uh, late 70s, early 60s, 70s. I grew up in church with hymns and I, I trust that we are still using hymns today because hymns are, 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 are good songs. There are hymns that have good theological experiences. No raising of hands, no clapping. But at this time, Paul and Silas, I guess, were clapping their hands and uh, raising their voices to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chain, chains came loose. Well, it is true we are not in actual battle today, except with this war with COVID-19 that we cannot see. We are constantly engaged in spiritual battle with unseen evil forces. The Apostle Paul pointed this out in his letter to the Vision Church, saying, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His might and His power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. We have just done our study, men, Bible study of the church on the armor of God. It was a great Bible study. Great learning experience for all of us. If you have not attended this Bible study, please contact uh, Brother Henry or other guys so you could join this Bible study. A part of that, towards the end of this armor, prayer, Paul inserted prayer as an armor. An armor that is not confined to any spot of, 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 of our body. It can move around like the shield of faith. Praise, an expression of worship, another form of prayer is a strong weapon against the rulers of darkness. It is a strong, strong enough to cause fortified wall to collapse. It has brought earthquake and created ambush against the enemies of Judah. Surely, it can bring victory in your life. After a Sunday morning worship service in a church I pastored before many years back, mid 80s towards 2000, early 2000. A lady who attended for the first time shared her testimony, and this is the gist of her testimony. Despite all resistance in my mind about Christian practices, 
During the time of praise and worship, I could not help but break down in tears and kneel on the floor beside my chair. I could not stand in the presence of the Lord. And this lady was involved in witchcraft. But she recognized that the power of God was more powerful than the evil forces. That was a turning point in her life. She became a follower of Jesus. The blowing of trumpets in front of the Ark of the Covenant and the shout of the war cry and praises among Israelite soldiers and the people, it shook Jericho and the wall came crashing down because of the presence of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Praise God. What was the next move? So everyone charged straight in. They rushed in to the city and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every, not just a few, but every living thing in it. Men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys, except for that house. Remember the house and the family of Rehab who hide or hid the spice. And that was, she was doing it as her faith in the Lord. It was a great victory. No single arrow shot, only the sound of the trumpet and the shout of praises to the Lord of hosts who gave them the city. Are you facing a difficult situation today that seems like fortified wall of Jericho? What is your Jericho this morning? An impassable situation. Do you feel discouraged, harassed, intimidated, and trapped like an animal in a cage? Are you facing a wall that is so high that you feel so small and insignificant? Is the enemy attacking you and you are beginning to accept his lies that you are helpless, amounting to nothing, especially during this time of pandemic? Listen, lift up your head, for the battle has been won. The wall of Jericho has collapsed. Christ has risen and has given us victory. Raise up your voice and start thanking and praising the Lord. For he inhabits the praises of his people. Truly, there is power in praise. Allow me to offer you a prayer wherever you are this morning, friends. Lord, we thank you for speaking to us this morning. We thank you for your word. Your word is life. Make it rima in our hearts this morning as we have listened to this. There are those of us this morning in their homes, oh God, wherever they are, whatever they're doing today, who might be facing difficulty in their lives. Businesses are shutting down this time. People are losing jobs. People are stressed out and even burnout, facing uh, discouragement. I just pray that you would stretch forth your hand, Father, among our brothers in their homes this morning. Minister to them, Father. I pray that they would rise up today and instead of complaining and instead of just thinking negative thoughts, that would, they, that would, they would rise up, Lord, from their feet, look up to you as the source of help. You're a powerful God and start worshiping and praising you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for doing the battle for all of us. The battle has been won. We will just Put up the banner of victory this morning because of what you have done many years back and what you have done in Jericho, Father. We give you glory and honor and praise. This is our prayer. As we end our time together this morning, I would like to ask to worship the Lord together as we would listen to the song.
When you're up against a struggle that shatters all your dreams, and your hopes have been cruelly crushed by Satan's manifested scheme, and you feel the urge within you to submit to earthly fears. Oh, no. 